Hello all. So this is the second video on Business Central API. And again, we'll be talking about a little bit history on this one. So if you are not interested, in, maybe join from the next video where we'll actually start in action of doing certain things. But if you are interested and in about the history of APIs in Business Central and what versions are still active, what versions has been obsolete, uh, what is the difference between versions, how you need to access them, then stay along and we'll talk about it in this particular video. So let's get started. So to begin with, uh, let's understand uh, how APIs has been released in Business Central or NAV to, be, to begin with. So APIs were first introduced in NAV 2018. So if you are currently on a pre-NAV 2018 version, you cannot use APIs. If you are on 2018 or higher, uh, the version beta of API was released in now 2018. And it is actually expired as of 2022, April 2022, 2020, sorry. So if you are still using APIs on in app 2018 to a business central 14 uh, environment, then it's time to upgrade those APIs to version 1.0 or version 2.0. The style of how you access uh, APIs, uh, all the API list that you can see on a Business Central SaaS environment in past with Business Central 14 would be a API Business Central Dynamics.com version 2.0. This is not the version of API, this is just a platform version. Then the environment name which is your production sandbox or whatever you name your environment. And then at the end, API slash beta. So that signifies the beta version. It was the first pre version that was released in NAV 2018 and was active till Business Central 14, if I'm not wrong. Uh, for an on-prem customer, you would be using something like this, where you have the server name, uh, your OData port number on your service tier, the service name and then at the end API slash beta. So that's how you will access all the beta APIs that were available in these versions. So let's quickly look at it, how it looked uh, from an implementation side in, and I don't have 2018, but look, let's look at it in Business Central 14 because Business Central 14 also had uh, the beta version available and we'll come to the next thing later. So, the APIs were pretty limited in the beta version and there was a design limitation more or less. So if you look at it, uh, what used to happen is any table which used to support API uh, had a field at 8000 ID and the field name is ID of type keyword. So any table which supported API had this field added by Microsoft. You can see it on uh, sales header, sales invoices, and other areas where API beta version was available. Now, the limitation of this model of adding a field and then there was a lot of code behind the scene to make sure that API works the way it is supposed to be, to keep IDs in sync, uh, was a little bit complex. That anytime you want to add um, an API feature, let's say on, uh, let's pick a table somewhere. These tables will have it, let's say, on item journal line. I don't think there was an 80,000 field. I doubt, but let's see, maybe I'm wrong. Yes, there was none. So in your table extension, you will go ahead and add an ID field. And then there were other steps which you need to make sure are done properly so that the ID is kept in sync. Uh, I'm very sure that I have an article about that in the old version uh, on my blog. So you are, uh, if you are interested, you can go and read details about the beta version over there. So as time, time go by, um, Microsoft decided that beta is, has been there for a while. Let's make it an official version. And that's where in Business Central 14, Microsoft came up with the API version 1.0. From a user standpoint, uh, there were some changes in the design. We'll talk about it in a while but you just have to change here uh, the version 1.0 on your on-prem or your SaaS URL back then. It was still using the ID field, so no more changes on how it got implemented, 
but because it was in business cycle 14 it was uh, part of an extension called api v1 you can still find in your product dvds of business cycle 14 that you will see an extension api v1 and the source code was available so you can go ahead and see what objects were there which were majorly pages and two queries at that back then so that all was available and if you look on these pages let me see if i can open them somewhere okay they looked something like this right uh, the version of api now was shifted to uh, the version 1.0 and uh, these were the fields that were exposed and then you can see here that there was a lot of code to kind of keep that in sync and the actions that this page was trying to execute so the version business central 14 was the first version where version 1.0 was announced and it is still active so if you are still using version 1.0 great no problems uh, if you are still using beta then time to at least switch to version 1.0 i would highly encourage that you switch to version 2.0 which is more latest and then in business central 17 where there was a major change that was done by microsoft if you remember microsoft added um four new fields in every table which is system created by system create modified by um what was other the id and created date and modified date five fields created by modified by created date time modified date time and the id and the id is important because now from a platform perspective in business central 17 and higher every record has an inbuilt field called id so when you compare it to a business central 14 implementation of version 1.0 or nav 2018 version beta you don't have to manually using table extension add a GUID field because it is already part of your system table <coughs> sorry system field in each and every table so as of today when you look at any record in business central from any table even if it's a temporary table you will find that they there are four a system field which are defined and managed by platform automatically so let's have a look on that so you go to help and support and then from there you do in an inspect page and data that gives you all the field list and then when you search for system you'll find that there's a system ID which uniquely identifies this record in this particular table created at when it was created created by who created it because it's a demo database it's coming empty and who last modified it and when it was modified so if i right now go in and it says 422 and i change this to sdm corporation one you will notice that this date will change to 510 2023 and the platform is maintaining that so you kind of don't have to worry about these four fields uh, or these five fields they are managed by system and the important field with respect to api is the system id so now the 80000 field is no longer needed and the system id will do that magic for you so when you switch your records you will say that the, see that the system id will change per record that's where Microsoft introduced version 2.0 which is a still active version and one of the most stable version of APIs at this moment as any API uh, the previous version will be supported uh, till the point it is not expired like beta has been expired but uh, you don't have to jump the gun if you are still on version 1.0 but if you want you can surely update your endpoints and see what changes are between version 1.0 and 2. Uh, the metadata URLs, these are the URLs that helps you to read the schema of those API pages if you are a developer uh, who is trying to interact with Business Central using APIs. And these are the same URLs and at the end you add the dollar metadata to see the metadata of that particular API version okay so we have talked about version 1.0 version beta and others these are the changes between beta and 1.0 
on different entities that were available. Uh, this is a list coming from the Microsoft MSDN doc where they listed what ha what they have changed in comparison between version beta and version 1.0. So if you are on version beta and you want to update to version 1.0, you just need to notice that these changes will be part of your new API calls that you're making and you need to be prepared for it as an external agent that you're using it. Now, as far as if you are on version 1.0 and you would like to upgrade to version 2.0, which seems more stable at this moment, which is more stable at this moment, uh, the AJ have written a detailed blog about what is new in version uh, API version 2.0. AJ Kaufman, so why should I waste my time? If you are interested in it, I'll put the link in the description of this video. Go ahead and read about it. For sure, it starts with that there is a URL change, which makes sense. Instead of version 1.0, now you should call it version 2.0. And then there is a source code available. We'll see that in a while. And then there are different changes that you will notice in this article, which will take you some time to read. But if you are in that transition phase, you need to read through these so that you understand how and how much version 2.0 is different from version 1.0. Hope that makes sense so i'll put that link in the description of this video so before we move further um let's open the where is my folder yeah in your business central whatever version you are using i'm using business central 2022 you'll see inside application you have two folders application api version v1 api version v2 so when you get into it you can extract the source like i have done and you can see all the source uh, code here and I think I have one of them open I don't know which one v1 so here is a v1 um, API extension that you can see uh, it has some code units now uh, which are also part of the API and then they have some permissions and then they have these different pages the API page lists on the top what version it is and then it lists down the fields and some other properties which we'll talk about in future videos but these are different api pages which are available in version 1.0 then they have permissions and all in the same way uh, in the version v2 you will be able to see the source code you can open it and read what's part of it right just for simplicity, what I've done is I have renamed some file because there was name API v1 and v2 names on the files. And I've just changed, uh, removed those uh, v1 and v2. And you can see that anything that is in this color is uh, where the v2 pages have been existing. So these pages are newly added in v2. Whereas this page authentication user group member has been removed from v2 whereas this is v2 this is v2 oh maybe it might have changed the name it was permission now it's permissions and here it is group member oh now it says group members so you can notice that these are the new pages or objects in the api app but then there are some which has been modified so let's look at some of those uh, some are semantic changes, uh, but at the same time, you will notice that in some pages, the new fields has been added by Microsoft in these API pages. And you can scan any of the pages like this and notice what has been changed between version 1 and 2. So combining this comparison versus the comparison that you'll find on AJ's blog will make you prepared for what's the difference between V1 and V2. So go ahead and do that. So in today's video, what we will try to do is we will try to see what happens when you try to access this URLs on-prem. Um, technically, we can only execute this on SaaS. So we'll do it another day because there are other things that I need to set it up for this. But let's see what you need to set up for on-prem. So if you are an on-prem customer, whatever we are doing now will help you to set it up. So let's assume I'm on Business Central 14. So we'll do it on 14. And 22 also uh, so if you are on version 14 you need to go to your service tier uh, edit the service tier and make sure that in your OData data tab you have two boolean set 
one is enable API services that you want to enable it and because it uses the OData behind the scenes so you need to have the OData services also enabled so make sure enable API services and enable OData services has been activated or enabled on your service tier you don't have to activate SOAP or API just these two settings on your OData service tab once you have changed that just restart your service and at this moment we'll be able to access the beta version of API because uh, uh, in the business level 14 the API extension was not by default installed okay once it gets restarted open any browser that you have uh, let me find one maybe the ages one where is that so that we can go there and see that okay I think here it is okay so now once you are here now you can access the same URLs that I've shown in that article and just follow that in that video that we see uh, or the slide deck that we see so let's minimize that and in business handle 14 as I said the beta, beta version was available so what I need to do is my HTTP and then my server name in this case is localhost and then my port number for OData is 2048 and service name is VC140 and then API slash beta once you do that uh, the browser will show you all the API pages that were exposed uh, in the beta version and this is the list of all the API pages that were available in the beta version okay let me make it a little bit big if I can okay it doesn't allow me let me try again okay let me make it full big okay so this is the list of API pages which was available in the beta version if you are in version 1.0 and still using um, business central 14 which some of our users may be what you need to do is you need to install that app which we saw so let's quickly do that mm. okay 140 service uh, dot ps1 and then we'll just quickly run the commands publish nav app server instance pc 140 and path and when you try to be fast you tend to be slower i'll just copy the path of api v1 app and that should publish it uh, and let me do write other commands which is sync nav app server instance bc140 and the name of the app is a little bit tough so i'll just copy that okay and then last but not least is we will install that app nav app and that's okay so this will get us and before we do that let's try to use this with v1.0 and see what happens okay we ended up with an error message that you don't have access to this and i guess we tried the right url okay now let's try to run this this will install that app in my bc140 environment and once this gets installed or published and installed I should be able to access the same URL which I just tried. So once this is done, I can just refresh this and I should be able to uh, run this and see oh, how that list look like. So this is the version 1.0, whereas this is the version beta and these are the different uh, API endpoints here and these are the different endpoints for API version 1.0. Now, as I said, we'll also do it in uh, version latest version so if you are on version 20 you can change your parameters as we did on or you know 15 16 17 18 19 and 20 right you can execute the same step as we did uh, in using the administration cell but if you are in the version which is business handle 20 or higher i'm correct 21 or higher yes you need to do that from PowerShell. So how you do that? You import the module and you just need to set two services or two properties in your service tier. 
one is API service enabled and another is OData service enabled to be true. So once you set these to true, the last thing that you need to do is restart nav server instance, server instance BC220. And I just did it for the same time. But these are the actual property names, uh, which you can see on your custom setting.config. And I'm just setting them to true and then restarting the service. Once I do that, I should be able to access my V1 and V2 because V1 is still active from my BC220 environment. So hopefully that works. And in the meantime, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and check what my port numbers are because I am not sure. So let me go to 220. And while this is happening, let me drag it in here so that we all can see it. And what I'm doing is I'm going to my custom setting.config and then open it with my code here. And it just opened in the previous one that I have. I just need to see my OData service port is 7048. Okay. So I know my port number is 7048. Um, I'm waiting for this to restart, but once it gets restart, I should be able to run more or less the same command with a different service name. Uh, this is 7048 and this is BC220. So I should be able to see version 1.0 of my API uh, in Business Central 2022. <laughs> And in the same way, I should be able to see my API version 2.0 once this gets restarted. Now, thing to remember that these two URLs will only work if you have the API app installed. Now, that's a little bit different in the Business Central ecosystem, which I forgot to tell you. So let me open my browser. And while this is restarting, let's go to extension management. either on-prem or SaaS, when you get into your extension management, you will never see an app with the name ABI. That doesn't mean that those are not installed. That means that those are extension which only have symbols. And that's why you cannot see them. So as these are refreshing, I'll explain you what I mean. And how you can see that do you have these API versions 1 and 2 installed on your business central whatever environment, right? So when you do a get nav app info, uh, server instance BC220, you will notice in this case, you will see everything, but you will again not see, or I have a better way to see it. So let's see out as a grid view. Let's see on the grid. Okay, sorry, my grid came on the other screen. So you'll notice that you will see some extensions like this, exclude API v2. And then if I'm not wrong, there should be exclude API v1, or am I completely wrong? Yes, exclude API v1. So you can see it here, but if you try to access the client on your browser like let me quickly do that uh, localhost bc220 and you go to extension management you will not see these two extensions because they are uh, symbols only okay so if you are looking for these extensions in your environment you will have to use powershell to see are these extensions installed or not and if they are not go ahead and do uh, install those extension as we just did for Business Central 14. You can repeat the same step for whatever Business Central version you are using. So the steps more or less remain same. They don't change. But you will not notice those exclude extensions here because they are just part of the symbols and they will only be accessible to see that are they installed or not from your PowerShell command. Hopefully that's clear. So once we have seen that, do we have those extensions installed or not? Uh, in the meantime, these pages got refreshed and now you see a version 1.0 in my PC 22.0 and version 2.0 in my PC 22.0.
so that's how you can access different versions on api on your browser in an on-prem world for SaaS, we'll talk about later in the future video but that's how you get it okay hopefully that cleared some of your doubts let's move to the next thing what is the next thing we discussed about the changes here is something that you need to keep uh, remember the base api extensions are not extensible so like uh, in a typical business center environment when you have to change something on any page you can go ahead and extend that page and add a field but when you look on all these api pages the extensible false will be set on every page and hopefully it makes sense now why it is set to extensible false because apis will be when the whenever the api design has been changed there's a detailed documentation that need to be produced and that may break when the next version of apis are announced so that's why these apis from microsoft are extensible set to false so if a microsoft api page does not satisfy your custom need I would highly encourage that you create a separate API page for yourself based on your needs. There's no way that you can extend it to be, make it simple, but I hope it's clear why it is not extensible. Uh, when I was researching about it, and I read quite a good amount of blogs, read good amount of documentation, it is suggested that uh, if you're building an API extension or API pages for your customers or code units, whatever that object is, queries, Make sure that keep them in a separate extension. Don't merge them with your PDEs. API should be always be a separate extension because they follow their own release cycle. They change uh, after a pre, you know, at a defined time. You should not be changing things on an API page daily. So you should try to keep them as separate extension and only finalize the design once your customer have tested whatever the integration needs are. Don't just keep on changing API pages. Uh, as far as authentication is considered, uh, for on-premise, you can still use basic, which is username and web service key, which we'll see in the future videos. Uh, for business central SaaS or online version, the only option for authentication is OAuth. Uh, in the next video, what we'll try to do is we'll try to set up how you configure OAuth to use these APIs. So that would be the next video. So now you know what the next video is. And in the coming videos, what we'll be doing is we'll be, I'll try to make sure that we follow whatever we are showing, all the steps in on-prem and SaaS. So if you are on on-prem, you still follow those. And if you are on SaaS, you still follow those, right? I don't want to make separate series for on-premise, just for on-premise. Uh, for APIs, uh, my plan is to use two uh, uh, apps or solutions one is postman and one is a rest client vs code extension these are the two commonly used uh, programs that are being used to uh, read and utilize apis for development purposes so if you are not familiar with it just make sure that you have a postman installed uh, which is freely available on website and if you are familiar or if you would like to do or follow these steps on the rest line then go to your extension management and search for an extension called REST client. Uh, this also allows you to stay within VS Code and run all your uh, API commands from here, STDP API club commands from here, right? So you can use either of them. I, as of this moment, I only know these two uh, ways to show demos on. If you have other suggestions, let me know in comments and I'll, I'll see if I can uh, add that tool into the tool set while making videos going forward. So I guess that's it for today. If you have any queries and suggestions, drop them into the comment box. I know this has been a lecture for a while, but before we leave, let's quickly recap. Uh, there were three, there are three versions, beta, which is no longer active version 1.0 and version 2.0 of the API. Uh, APIs are available on-prem and SaaS. Uh, you need to make sure that you have the extensions installed. 
you can't check that from extension management page you'll have to run the get nav app info command on your powershell to see do you have the extension installed the two properties that you need to set is o data is enabled and api services are enabled and you can access those urls there from an authentication perspective on prem still supports basic and uh, web service key whereas for business and sas you will need we'll need to set up an oauth connection which we'll do in the next video so hopefully that kind of clarifies or play uh, puts a good groundwork for what's coming up in the next video which is oauth authentication and then going forward we'll talk about different use cases and scenarios right so if you are still here please do like this video please do share this video to share that info with others and if you haven't please please subscribe to the channel it helps us to understand how many people are watching the content and do you like that content or not so thank you i'll see you in the next next day with the next video on apis thank you